You got Richard here today. Uh, hello, you got Richard here today. I'm gonna try and play you this uh, interview we've had with the Try and Talk a Sheriff. This is gonna be the interview when we, went, when we actually went in to speak to him when his detectives, this 20, it looked like a guy was 25, 26 years old. Uh, <laughs> didn't look old enough to be a detective. Uh, you know how you always hear your, your parents and grandparents say, respect your elders? You tell me if this guy was given any, if he was a law officer, sworn to uphold, protect him, serve, and you were, you were his employer. He was working for you. Is this how you would want your employee to work? And remember, you're paying a salary. Is this how you would want your employee to talk to you? Or if he's in my position, I have been assaulted. I'm going back and prove that I've been this way. I've been assaulted and other things happened to me. Over, over the last 20 years at least, or at least last 20, I've here 17, 18 years, at least the last 25 years, it's been reported to the, the Sheriff's Department. Over the last uh, 18 years, I we deliberately went and had me a, uh, I, get out of I had I had proof, I had reputable proof. I had people who were with me that their word was impeccable. The one person was a, a a federal parole officer in the past, and his word would stand up in court. And through the sheriff's deputies down there, talk to us like we wouldn't. Oh, yeah. I'm not recording, but not. Hello, you're here with Richard this morning. Uh, I'm going up and I'm going to play some of this, the, this sheriff deputy, or he is a detective now. Now, we went there the day before. I'll play that here in a minute. Now, imagine, I want to let y'all, everybody listen to this, everybody hears it. If you had been assaulted over a period of 10 years, let's say 20 years, ongoing, you had documents, you had proof. If you had people, neighbors call 911 because they seen you getting beat. The police come, you fill out a report, you tell them to come back and get it, you go in the house and copy it. And then you see the guy leave, we're all standing out there on the road, right there in the front of the driveway, waiting for some, for the officer to leave and stuff. He gets down the bottom of the hill and sees a piece of paper, wire paper come fly out of the air. So I walk down and pick it up. <laughs> And I'll show you sometime here up in here that that was a report that I had just filled out. Now here, if this was your employee, is this how you would want your employee to speak to the public? If you've been assaulted and you made numerous reports, they told you that they was going to discredit you. So you go have a, a psycho a neuropsychological evaluation at the University of Missouri, uh, uh, Rust, the Rust Rehabilitation uh, Program. And I, I made a film called Harm's Way. It was by Barry Corbett. And I'm getting off track again. Is this how you want your employee to talk to you? If you've been assaulted and you want to know you filed, I don't know how many complaints. You went down there so many times and you filled out all kind of report forms. And then they never been down, nobody ever talked to you, and then they say they didn't exist. And you went down there to ask what they were done about it. First time they tell you they're going to discredit you. And then you go down there, I stopped the highway patrol general headquarters in Jefferson City, Missouri. And then I went. 
from there to my daughter's house. My daughter's significant other smacked her. Yeah, I mean, there was, hey, she had had six stitches. I had to take her hospital. Uh, Officer Lanigan of the Jefferson City Police Department. When we went to the hospital and she saw forms, uh, he shook my hand and said, I could, he said, Miss Rain, you, I don't know if, if I could have stood here like that. And somebody, hit, somebody hit my daughter and caused six stitches. I told him, I said, well, I'm a fellow that I couldn't assault him first. And he shook my hand and com commended me on being able to control my temper. Okay, the reason that wasn't so important is from there I went to the Elton Police Station and talked to Captain Mays. I told Captain Mays I was afraid of Mel County Sheriff's Bar. I wanted him to go with me down there. He couldn't go with us, so he got on the phone, put the sheriff on speakerphone, and said, Mr. Ranger is afraid to go down there. He's afraid your officers are going to hurt him. <laughs> I went a year before I told the Attorney General of the United States to make Department of Justice. I got emails from George Bush. You know, it, it's insignificant. I, I write the President about the Sheriff. What's his response? We have to go to the Sheriff's Department. But the significance in what I'm saying is, I went to the President of the United States, Attorney General, the Department of Justice, the Sheriff's Association. I even got, I even got a supervisor at the FBI in Jefferson City's phone number. I went to them. Okay, on day, like I said, on the day this happened, I went to Howard Hall and the Ellen Police Station, and he called the sheriff. The sheriff says, I'll oh, send him on down here. Nothing will happen to him. I walk through the door. The dispatch says, Mr. Ringer, he is expecting you. Wait, right here. He walked out, took over some uh, subpoenas or something that had to be signed in the courthouse. He'd be right back. Wait, right here. Well, about that time, that female sergeant, Keith, came out of the back room and said, Well, what do you want to talk sheriff for? Well, she done knew I, me and her, excuse me, me and her had headed out a few times about what she said to me. And I want to jump around. She's the one that I talked to a year before when Captain Luttrell was there. And I think he resigned over some, some of the crazy stuff that they were doing there. I'm going to try and get him on an interview later. But listen, and anyway, I went down there to the search department. That lady came out. I said, damn, can't you do anything? I got you on tell. I just want to give you these papers. I got these cover sheets. Me and David Bennett have been down here before when uh, Brian Pendleton was an officer and we had signed two copies of everything in front of front of this deputy and from um they bennett we followed him. so the year was up on saturday and this is a wednesday when i went down there i said i just want to make sure i brought these to you i've called the sheriff i remember i've been to the department of justice right and oh yeah and after they told me that, I knew they was going to try and discredit me. So I went to the University of Missouri and had a neuropsychological evaluation by one of the top universities in, in the United States. I also went to a psychologist one day a week for nine months and told them all what was happening. I got them. I'm going to be putting them papers up around here, too. And anyway, I went down there and... I said, damn, can't guy do anything right? And she's got this funny look on her face. She turned around and strutted off. And I uh, <laughs> come back with these three big officers and told me I was come with them. I asked them if I was under arrest. They said no, but they put me in a state mental hospital. Just like I told the president. Just like I told the attorney general. Just like I told the highway patrol. Just like I told 
the chief of police right before I walked in the courthouse and they done exactly what I said they was going to do a year before. Now listen to how this officer talks to us. Remember, all I want to do is find out what they've done about me getting hit in the back of the neck and having a uh, crushed spine. That simple question: What have you all done? Now you listen to this whole interview, and and we policebeast.com records all the conversation. That way, I can't say, "Well, they said this. I heard them say this. They heard me say this. I said this." For we have recording to document the exchange of information between us and them. And listen to what they said. First off, we have a, like a situation here where... A situation. Is that an answer to my question? I asked him a question. I asked him a question. What have y'all done? Why are they trying to avoid me? It's like this. I seen something that happened down there that... If anybody listens to me, there's going to be another two dozen bastards fired. I didn't do anything wrong. I haven't done anything wrong. I'm in the right. If they just listen to me, if they cannot, if they cannot understand me, they need to say, hey, did you say this? Did you say this? Repeat. Tell me what you said. Richard, did you say you want to go get a milkshake? Or did you say you wanted to go shake the milk? There is a difference. But if they would ask me, they would find out. And what they're going to find out the hard way is if they listened to me in the first time and said, Oh my God, and this stuff wouldn't went on for 10 years and got all blown out of hell. Because they can't undo what's been done. I told my sister was going to kill my dad before he, she, it happened. Yeah, does he sound real professional up to this point? Now remember, I just went there to ask them what they had done. What they should have done says, Mr. Winger, we will show you everything we've done. But, we don't allow a tape cord. Why don't you turn it off? And then I want I want them to give me a reason why they want to turn it off. They didn't do it that way, though. Maybe I'm sounding a little crazy. I'm getting a little upset here. But, uh, yes, yes, I do. I want to record. I want to record what's being said because you can through this conversation you'll be able to hear. <laughs> they they want to say nothing. They want to ask no questions. Why? I want to say they said we had enough documentation. Okay, I want to see it. I ain't got it. I got, I have more documentation than they do. I guarantee that. document the exchange, a change of information, for we would know what was said, the public would know what was said, and nobody could say, I didn't hear him say that, that ain't what I heard, that ain't what I meant, see they want to keep it just like my sister, she want nobody to hear what was said, for she can say I'm wrong, they all saying I had a head injury, I don't know what's going on, if I had a head injury, they wouldn't have had me help make a movie to help people with head injuries. The movie is called Harm's Way. It's by Barry Corbett. Uh, type in uh, National Head and Spinal Cord Injury Association, 1970, 1986, Barry Corbett, Harm's Way. Yeah, look. The exchange. Document the exchange. Document change now. How can I, now here? Listen to what this fool is gonna say. 
There's been enough documentation. How can we document something if it ain't happened yet? Listen to this fool. Okay, they said he provided to me. Well, let me see if uh, someone that stamped envelope or uh, they sent to me. Let me see where it got sent to me. If they hand it to me, let me see the videotape. I ain't got none of this information. That's what we went down there for. And we documented them not having it. Well, why'd he stay? He could left. I wouldn't hold his hand. Somebody had, I don't know what the hell, they wouldn't let Mr. Evans speak. We went to a talker show. Who are all these other guys surrounding us for? They're scared of us? Look, if you hear Mr. Abbott talk on this, he call me and let me know. Call him at 573-369-2341, extension 2239. Talk to us. That's it. They don't have nothing to hide. They ain't got nothing. They ain't got nothing to hide. He ain't got it. Yeah, I just got it. It's a play on words. He ain't got nothing to hide. He ain't got nothing to hide. That's right. Hey, he said his own word. He ain't got nothing to hide. He ain't got no information. He ain't got all the documents. This is just part of the part. This ain't even a drop in the bucket of the documents I got. I feel so dumb. I feel like God, I feel dumb. That's right, they don't have no information on my I just realized that. I thought he'd be an obstinate woman. 
He was telling me the truth. He don't have nothing to hide. He ain't got no dog with those urges. He wants me to hell out of there for out and blow a whistle. Now, tell me, I'm, I'm just part way into this conversation. Now, this is after we had our tradition the day before. Is this how you would want your employee work for you? Is this how you want your employee to work? If this was you and you've been assaulted, had bones broke, been poisoned, been stabbed, and had witnessed all this stuff, had witnesses that you took care of my reports. Okay. They've got, they can prove it's been turned in and then some done that. Well, that has to be a lie because if I stabbed you, if I stabbed you, he ain't here and broke your face. He ain't back in there and broke. <laughs> I got cast cancer. Right. Put poison in your food you can prove it up. And they ain't done nothing. What, what, I want to see what they've done. Because if they had done something, somebody would be under arrest. Why don't they want anybody to hear what they've been they say? I I asked the president, Mr. Obama, please, I beg you, please, Mr. Obama, go with me down in our sheriff's department. Find out why nothing has been done. Mr. Attorney General of the United States, please go down there with me and find out what's not why anything hasn't been done. Who do I ask? The governor? I've asked the President of the United States, God. I have asked God. And God says, be patient. Patience is a virtue. To be patient, you will overcome. Now listen, you give some men enough rope to hang themselves. Well, I give them 10 more years worth of rope, and they've got wrapped so tight around their legs they can't step nor stand on top of a pole. It's the option. What, what are they going? What are they going to do to us if we turn on the on on talk? We did turn the tape recorder off. We did turn that tape recorder off. The second that button was moved in the opposition, we both were escorted out the front door and told to leave and not come back. You know, him and guy, they told the wrong people to do that. They do not know who they messed with. We turned it off, and he lied, because they ran us right smooth out the door, and the and and sheriff never said one word. Recording right after we got out. I'm off. We're here standing in front of the Miller County Sheriff's Department, Missouri, and we attempted to have a meeting with the sheriff and the department. And it's policeabuse.com's policy that whenever we can, that we tape record all conversations to provide one, evidence of the conversation, number two, to help 
ensure the accuracy of our investigative reporting. In this case, uh, we were asked if we had a recording device, and we did say that yes, we were ha we have a recording device. Now, uh, you tell me what you think is supposedly the the major issue here. They won't do anything. I, I made numerous reports. I've had witnesses. Two of the witnesses were undercover police officers that assaulted, and they, and they won't do anything. Okay, and. Have you ever had a meeting with the, the sheriff before? Uh, not very long. I went and talked to him. I told him to turn over Highway Patrol. They turned it over to his buddy, the Water Patrol. Okay. And have you discussed this with anybody else other than, I know we've talked about it Sergeant Vernon. He gave his recommendations, but he's no longer employed with the department. Is there anybody else that we've talked to other than? Nobody we can talk to. All of them had to resign. Okay. I, I, talked to, I went to Highway Patrol and I talked to them about it, and they gave me recommendations to go back down here. I've talked to the attorney. I've got a letter from Matt Blunt when he is the governor. I got and Jay Nixon the attorney general. I talked to him. And now he's the governor. I've talked to him. I, I've been in two deaths at Highway Patrol. I talked to him. Uh, Trooper White, and Trooper White at one time was headed towards the wreck. And uh, it was a school bus here in Miller County, and uh, he, I was on the phone with him, he pulled up to the old sheriff's here, I'll talk to him about right now. And he told me that the sheriff wouldn't give him straight answers about it. And I went to the Highway Tour General Headquarters and talked to Gregory Smith. He was, he was then, he was a sergeant, and now he's a captain. He got a phone call. Um, Captain Mays in the old police department. And I went there and talked to him. Captain Mays got a phone call, Mr. Rabbit. And Mr. Rabbit says, Oh, same on down here. No way, hurry. You know, I don't worry about it. I walked through the door, and a female sergeant that, uh, a few years before he told me she's going to beat my ass if I didn't drop this. Uh, said she's going to put me in the metal house. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was the day of it the interview. Now you can catch that on uh, on YouTube. I'm going to play what, what the encounter was the day before. Now we went in there and the sheriff was standing there but listen to what we were asked. We're recording this time. We're going to try and talk to the sheriff. We're going to talk to the sheriff. And nobody else want to talk to the sheriff. Well, here she comes. through here. This, they're going to keep it at me. And this is what I put up on that cartoon year ago. No, he start almost arguing me. He resigned or he retired. He, how can he retire and still work or listen to us? He retired. He resigned. He rehired him, not retired. He's working on the phone. He's still working here, though. He resigned. This is getting me a whole big mess. I'm on. 
Oh, heck. This is a big mess. Huh. Well, it's cost me at least 40000 at least in one, one, one small cookie jar and half of $256,000 because of lack of what the sheriff has done. He didn't any. If burglar broke in your house and you had him on a security camera, your neighbors had called him and reported it. And if you, more or less what all this boils down to is, uh, I wanted my toolbox back, and when I went over and found out that the toolbox was put in the same white horse trailer, being pulled by the same white pickup truck that had been going by my house. First, he had people in brown shirts, look like brown uniforms, and then the, the night that, um, uh, Rhodes, Ran, uh, Randy, uh, anyway, uh, Rhodes uh, talked to the sheriff on TV that night. They went by here in blue uniforms. All I want was my toolbox back. Me and the neighbors all seen what happened. And he does two houses down from me. His house got burnt down over the same, me same mess. Well, he got Richard here. I got some pulling in my driveway. Um, <laughs> you all have a nice day. Now off broadcast. Well, good night.